You ready? Yes. Okay, this is it. <laughs> ready for BlizzCon? I'm ready for BlizzCon. We're I'm wearing recording. all my Blizzard merch right now. Hey guys, it's me. It's your best friend. It's uh, my name's John Burton. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I uh, uh, I started a YouTube channel uh, almost eight and a half years ago now called Carbot Animations, and we do Blizzard parody cartoons. And joining me is my brother Andrew. Hello, I'm Andrew. I'm gonna be doing some uh, background stuff today. It's great to be here. I'm super excited. And he will also be in the background because he has no I camera. Will also, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I will also be in the background, talking over Jonathan's shoulder, uh, so to speak. But yeah, so we're gonna do a, a scene uh, from Hero, a Heroes of the Storm cartoon involving Hogger and some Murrow. Um, and we're gonna animate it for you guys. And we're gonna talk about stuff. And hopefully it's gonna be fun <laughs> for everyone. Yes, hoping. Man, look at all the hog champs oh, in the chat. So now let's get started to animate. Um, we're, we are using a program called Adobe Animate. Um, and we're drawing on something called the Cintiq, which basically is a screen that you can draw directly on. Um, but yeah, we're doing a, a, a scene between Hogger and Samuro. So I'm gonna press play first so we know what we're doing. It's Hogger doing his thing and Samuro appears. Well, three of them, of course. As so Hogger obviously retaliates. Uh, and what you'll see here is that Samuro is animated and Hogger is not, because we'll be animating Hogger, uh, and maybe we'll do a little extra Samuro if we have the time. But we're gonna be animating Hogger, and Hogger's like uh, roughs have already been drawn out here. You can see in the kind of the purple outline here. Um, and this is what it is, the, the plan is for it to look like. He throws the fridge at him, he opens the fridge and he eats it. That's yeah. weird, Jonathan. I thought Hogger for a second there turned into an arrow. Why was there an arrow there? Oh, it's because he's he's walking. Yeah. So so when we do our roughs, like a lot of times we don't like draw everything. Um, so right here, where is it? Here it is. Uh, he's standing here, and then it's just an arrow saying he goes there. That's Jeez, all. Jeez, I thought that was Hanzo doing his alt for a second. <laughs> just arrows in, freaking play the game <laughs> from the other side of the screen, <laughs> of the, the map. I've seen it happen. Yeah. Okay, so he's gonna spin in. We're probably gonna update this too. Um, this is kind of like a placeholder almost. Uh, but then he comes back, and then he stops twirling, and then he's there. So I'm gonna, I gotta do, uh, what I wanna do is uh, animate from him spinning to not spinning. So we're gonna have some like momentum slow down, and uh, uh, hopefully it looks cool, I guess. Let's zoom in a bit. Again, I'm going to start with this keyframe so I know where I'm going, and then after that, uh, do the in-betweens. So the keyframes are the main poses, and then the in-betweens are the in-betweens. If that wasn't self-explanatory. Key poses mean, like, important and yeah. strong poses. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to do his face first. Oops. This crazy eye. I've always found it somewhat fascinating that how much you simplify uh, these characters. Because I have drawn, you know, for, for any of you guys watching that don't know, I actually animate a lot of the episodes currently um, full time. And I will often simplify a character and then show it to Jonathan. And then he'll just <laughs> magically simplify it more. Like dumb it down even more. I don't even know how it, it, he does it so so well. That's what I do. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, what, that's, what that's what I do. <laughs> anyway, it, it it sounded that sounds like an insult, but it's actually quite a talent. In order in order to simplify something like that effectively, that's that's actually quite uh, quite talented. There, it's really really cool how that how that happened. You you should actually. Um, so uh, I kind of explained who I was. That I I started the channel. Um, and mostly it was me, uh, for the first, uh, bit. Uh, Andrew's been in and out for a while, but do you want to talk about that? Sure, yeah, um, I actually started helping as, as soon as, I think, episode 7 of StarCraft, but 
uh, yeah, there was a lot of things going on that sort of uh, had me coming in and out of helping. Um, but, you know, we are, you know, happy to announce that uh, we are both full time. And uh, that's pretty friggin' exciting because we get to do what we love to do. And at the same time, uh, you know, just have fun. <laughs> it's just the best, I think. Yeah, I, mean, I would brag about working from home, but everyone does that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And it's not as much of a brag anymore. Yeah. Um, I'm going to keep his... Uh, actually, I'll do the rest of his keepos here. His arms. The arms are just nubs. Even, like, Hogger, though, is kind of a... Like, I feel like he's... Actually, a lot of the hero's characters are a little bit more complex than, like, say, the StarCraft's characters that we do that are, like, jelly beans and... It, not much else, um, but uh, uh, I think the hero's character is a little bit more complex just because um, I don't know, we try to get like the the extra detail in to try to you know, to the characters or whatever. Uh, the difference between Jim Rayner and a Marine is that there's more detail because of his face and stuff. Sure, yeah. And also uh, the StarCraft's characters are units which means there's many of them which means they kind of have to be simple so you can yeah. use a lot of them in one space uh whereas here it's like almost every character is their own own unique character and you can kind of spend a bit more uh resources on detailing yeah. them yeah that's true okay he's got sp spinning spin <laughs> every time i see hogger all i can all i can think about is that stupid Scooby-Doo voice. <laughs> can we can we say Scooby-Doo? I don't even. Know I don't know. Name. I don't know. I have to edit that out now. Yeah. Okay. Well, or, or we'll bleep it out. Maybe you guys can guess what name we said. Re. <laughs> Either way, it's funny to to do that kind of to like attach characters to characters. It helps us come up with ideas, actually. in here oh also if you guys in the chat is there a chat i think yeah yeah okay Can't you see it andrew this is yeah, live that's right sorry wow look at, all this, <laughs> look at all that action going on in chat this is um, not live if you didn't catch my sarcasm um, uh what are you talking about i, I think I, I think they know chat why don't it's, you it's, ask us some questions and i will read them and ask them oh yes to, jo to jonathan that sounds great yeah totally totally on the fly yeah, okay. Cool. Let's just look at the questions that they're throwing in chat. All right, let's see. Oh my gosh. Mr. Crowd Watcher! Oh, no. What is your what is your favorite hero of the storm character? And why? Um Heroes of the Storm or Hero Storm? Both. <laughs> uh What's the uh, difference? Well, one's a game and one's a show, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So, obviously, like, my favorite character to play is for sure um, Diablo. I, mean, I, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Hold on. Let me just... Yes, I am. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't mean to distract you, Mr. Carbot. Yeah, my favorite character, though, is Diablo because it's smashy, smashy. Like, any, any character that is, like, brute force... In a game, that's usually the character I gravitate towards and destroy them. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know, I enjoy the... I kind of miss the old Diablo in Heroes where you got to smash him and do tons of damage, but, um, yeah. Jonathan likes the characters to take up the majority of the screen. <laughs> like, as much space as possible he can fill up. That's how big the characters he likes to be. The Barbarian, yeah. um, Diablo... The Tauren. The Torin and WoW, yeah. Although I don't really play WoW, you play WoW. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, I have another question, Mr. Garbot. Listen, um, how about you lose half your fan base and tell us if you like Horde or Alliance? I already said I don't really play World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's cool. I guess. Anyway, you you right. can answer that. You you can answer that though. Uh, yeah, as a as a family, we tend to play Horde. Um, I don't know why. I think it's because we've... No, I don't want to offend any... <laughs> I 
I don't want to offend anyone. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I don't want to offend any people that play Alliance or don't play Horde or whatever. It's offensive to say that. It's a big rabbit hole. I don't want to go down there. Yeah. We don't want to know why we make the decisions we make. That's right. I'm redoing his arms because I'm putting his arms on a separate layer. Um, uh, these nubs here. Uh, so I want to have them to have a bit of drag. Oh, hold on. Uh huh. Um, so when he's done spinning, his arms still are catching up. So I don't have to animate the body more. Oh, I should probably do his face though. The crazy eyes. Hogger is like, I kind of wish. <laughs> I kind of wish he wasn't. Like, I like that he's unstoppable the entire time he's spinning, but I don't like it when I'm not Hogger and he's unstoppable the entire time he's spinning. Yeah. Like, like it literally can go on forever. If, if, if with certain characters, you're like, what do I do? Like, if you're a melee character. Is and that what it's you like, were doing to the boss the other day when we were playing? You were just going forever, back and forth? Yeah, I was trying to... I, I didn't... I wasn't successful, but... Well, I guess on Towers of Doom I was. Yeah, Towers of Doom you were. But, I don't know. It's, it's a fun ability, though. It's really fun. And maybe, like, it's, it's so much fun to play, but if it's on the other... Again, if it's... The other team using it, if it's the other team uh, playing Hogger, you just roll your eyes. Oh, really? Yeah. He, he, the way I feel about him is that he looks fun. Never tried him yet. I don't know. I, I don't really buy new characters uh, when they come out. But uh, um, he looks like fun. But uh, I think this is like the first character in a long time where he hasn't felt too OP when coming out. Yeah, he's just mostly like... He he he's like, I don't know. He he, he can get away. Pr pretty easily with well, I don't know. His spinning like it, it can go so far. He's just he's out of control kind of thing. Like he just keep. I don't yeah, know. he's got a couple escapes. Knockbacks. Yeah. He's got a, Walls. He's got a, he can create a wall. Kid. Yeah, create a wall. Yeah, but he's been like at this point. Like by the time you guys are. Or it's BlizzCon, I mean. Um, he's been out for a couple months now. Yeah. Speaking of what, is, is this going to be an episode, Mr. Carbot? Oh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, we're actually going to incorporate this into an episode once it's uh, completely done. Um, it's... Uh, uh, we're going to add to the scenes. So there's a couple more... Like, there's a bit of a story behind this part. Um, but it's going to be part of a, a bigger episode uh, that you'll see later um, in the coming weeks, basically. Oh my gosh. Move the anchor. Vroom. Look at him. That's clean. Yeah. He's hogging the screen. Yeah. Man, everyone in the chat's laughing at my joke. It's because it was so well executed. Anyway, um, next one. Next question. This is a question here. There you go. Wait. There's a the, oh. the the most rewarding part about animating actually is pressing play and then you get to see how your work looks. And so this is what I was kind of talking about, like the momentum here. He stops spinning and then he kind of turns. You get to see his body turn and then his arms follow through. And I'm actually gonna make his arms follow through a little longer here. And having that ball and chain drag behind him will even look cooler. Yeah, and we're gonna put that in a separate layer here. Uh, ball and chain. Yeah. I find it actually difficult to throw the box thing and then hit them into it right away with the ball and chain. Is that uh, is that a uh, a strategy that you yeah. should be doing? Yeah, because when you knock them back and they hit a wall, they get stunned. Oh, right. It's kind of like Diablos. Yeah. Um, but uh, I find it, like, to do it quick enough is is kind of difficult. It looks easy, 
But like, I don't know, they like slide past the box half the time. Yeah, whenever I see you playing Diablo and I see like some of these characters like slip. <laughs> yeah. It looks it looks like a dead on wall a wall hit. And they like slip to the side somehow and keep There's running. Like, oh, it's like, <laughs> yeah. Like sometimes I feel like Blizzard puts some soap in those that code. Yeah. The super slippery walls. Here, this ball is gonna be rolling. But then sometimes you hit it on this like ridiculous angle and it stuns them. I don't know. It's like this yeah. weird, yeah, weird chance. I, I wonder how it's actually programmed. Like, like, cause it's I don't know. Yeah, it's it seems to be. Uh, the, there's there's some small variations there that I I don't understand. There you go, the ball. So again, that momentum's following through. First with his body, and then into the uh, ball and chain. Here. It, look, it looks like Samaro is getting ready to block, is it right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah, that's, that's that's the, uh, the other stuff we have here. The other roughs. So now we're going to go into the other keyframes as they fight. And uh, see where it leads us. Sometimes, um, so even though like I plan out an episode and I do the roughs and stuff like that. Sometimes it actually, once in a while, will take me in a different direction. As I'm animating it, that's where, like, you know, you'll think of, like, oh, this would be funny if, if it happened this way or or it changed a bit or whatever. So, um, uh, so it might take a different direction. But for the most part, we'll be following this. And I'm going to be doing the keen frames to that. But I, I don't think we're going to be deviating just because we are, we don't want to go over time, basically. There. First keyframe. Well, after the spin. First keyframe. Oops. Yeah. So it's him winding up for his uh, first attack here. There's the arm. It's tufts of fur. And the tail. We can even do his mouth. And again, like we, so what we're doing is frame by frame animation, uh, which means you draw every single frame. Um, uh, it's not like a puppeted animation or anything. So every line that we draw uh, is a line that we're gonna draw again and again and again for like a character design. Um, uh, if there's one extra line in that character design, then there's you gotta draw that a million times again. Um, and actually, if you go back to StarCrafts. Season one, you'll see the Marines have like shoulder pads. You remember Andrew? I do. Yeah. Yeah, they, they have these small round shoulder pads, and then I think it's like season two or three. I don't show <laughs> those ever again. Yeah, there's there's gone. Because it was just like it was just yet another thing to draw, a yet another thing to color, and we pump out cartoons uh, weekly, so it's a it's a lot of effort just to do that, um, and so. Uh, but that's why we keep the design super simple, but we try to keep them recognizable at the same time. Somehow, somehow Carbot, uh, did an armor research and it, and it reduced their armor. Yeah. That's better. It's more efficient. Sure. You can, you can <laughs> pump them out faster. Yeah. It's like having a reactor on your barracks. Yeah. There you go. Would you like me to toss you a question? Sure. Let's do it. Mr. Carbot, how long does it take to make an episode? Uh, so a week, because we do a weekly. Um, it's kind of weird, though, because, like, uh, so in the beginning, I mostly just did it myself from start to finish, which was, like, agonizing i loved it but it was agonizing <laughs> but now that we have more people our team has grown quite a bit and uh it still takes a week because we, we're doing other stuff too like we're, we're we're getting extra like animation jobs and stuff like that which is so awesome because that's like kind of it, it really helps us keep us afloat um but it also allows us to just focus on one thing so now mostly i storyboard and then andrew mostly does well how much like 70, 80% of the cartoons you animate now? 
Uh, yeah, probably something like that. Um, we got a good, a really good animator named Leslie that helps out uh, once in a while. His ep- his episodes are great. Um, but yeah, I think I think for the most part, unless it's like a special occasion and we need that extra carbot touch, I think Jonathan will personally um, get his hands in there. Yeah, I usually do the ones that either like I have a particular vision for, uh, or um, I like Andrew's usually like he's busy with the weekly ones. So the specials, uh, like the one that you saw uh, at BlizzCon, uh, a BlizzCon line at the beginning. I think it was his opening ceremony. Wow, um, what a great cartoon that was! So good. yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, that 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 one I I did, but yeah, so it's it. It's usually like the specials I do, but once in a while, the the regulars now as well. So basically what he's saying is I serve the fast food and he serves the gourmet meals. (laughs) The gourmet meals that are slightly above the fast food. (laughs) He puts the parsley next to the fries. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I do. Uh, One thing that's like I, I try to do... Uh, as well, and it helps make car- like animations look nice. Is um, the line quality? Um, so like, if you have like uh, varying thicknesses of lines, uh, it's best to make it, keep it intentional. Like if I did this, and then did this, it it, it would look kind of off because his arm is so skinny or whatever, or like this. Um, it kind of it starts to look a little bit like. Uh, blobby and uh, sloppy, but um, keeping the the line quality is kind of like part of the thing that kind of helps make a cartoon look kind of nice, uh, amongst uh, nice keyframes and good in betweens and uh, all the other stuff. Yeah, hogger, hogger, hogger. I don't even know how he actually sounds because all I do is picture a different voice. Yeah, I, he actually I his voice is weird because now I all like whatever whatever you go Reggie like that's all I think about. <laughs> yeah, me too. And I can't I can't um, like and then when I actually hear him I'm like Ugh, that's weird. <laughs> it's been the wind now. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. I yeah, I, I can't even picture his voice now. I just can't, <laughs> which sucks because I I'm sure the voice actor does an incredible job. All right. Um. He 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 talks like in the third person, right? I, I don't He's know. like Hogger wants this. Yes, like, he, yes, you know, he does. Yes, he does. As soon as he said that, I knew. Yeah. I, I only have I have them like level six or seven or something. Hogger likes to eat garbage. He does have a talent called Garbage Fire, which, <laughs> which I do like. Uh, wonder why they didn't call it Dumpster Fire. Oh, because he throws garbage. He throws uh, it's called a Loot Horde. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so these are all the the keyframes that I'm just drawing right now, um, and it uh, like paying attention to is the way his weight is shifting and everything. Actually, that tail is way too big. That is not the same size. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay, so I'm gonna do some in betweens now for these swings here. Okay, I know I can swing a little earlier. Right, and the in betweens again are the, the in betweens. So he's gonna uh, step back. Oh, I should do an in between here actually as well. Mr. Carbot, why is Hogger green and then why is he blue? That's right there. This is yeah. That's, so that's called the onion skin. Uh, and stinky. Th- the blue is the f- past and the green is the future. So Hogger is a time traveler. Yeah, exactly. You can see through time. So the green one is the the frame that he's about to go to, and the blue one is the frame he was just in. Yeah. 
So it allows you to like get the line accuracy uh, uh, as best as possible. Um, the the way you do it in the old, the old days, which we did in school, <laughs> was uh, like pay, like a light under the table through like a, a transparent table, um, and you would see the papers, and then you like multiple frames of paper, and that's how you would see. You couldn't see future frames though. Anyway. Yeah, move on to another question. And so here, uh, what I'm also doing is, um, his once again his arms are going to be following behind his body, and it, same with his ears. So his ears are like flopping back and forth as he as he's like winding up his attack as well, and his mouth as well. His mouth is getting higher. Or his teeth, but his his uh, snout is starting to lower. And again, the tufts of fur are. Kind of swaying back here. That. Right before the swing. And then... Yeah, that ball and chain, you gotta feel the weight behind it. Yeah. Rawr. I don't wanna... Hmm. Do another... So you drew him with a normal eye and a goofy eye. Yeah. Which which he does not have two different eyes, but I think you do that to emphasize his crazy character. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I like I feel like two crazy eyes just like is uh is too much. Yeah, I feel he's like, like the he's one like half there. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the, yeah, one there, one not emphasizes I don't know, it just reads better, I feel like that he's like a little bit nuts. Is there another character that has eyes like that? One one in and one out? Uh, if they're like crazy? Like, doesn't Junkrat have an eye that's yes, crazy? Yes, that's true. Yes. he. I, I usually do him the same way, but not always. Because he's kind of like that, like with his like... <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. how I can best describe him. <laughs> that's 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 Carbot's impression of Junkrat, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's the next keyframe here? Okay, now he, he he's gonna be like twisting around here. Those arm is wrapping around himself, and his head is now uh, uh, is behind as well. Oh, his tail. Got his tail. He goes, so now it's wrapping around. It kind of looks like he's dancing. Yeah. This is a spin. Whoop. You gotta do another frame between here. And it's like, it can be really tricky. Like, so I wouldn't recommend trying to, like, if you're animating for the first time, try and do everything all at once. You shouldn't do be doing that anyway. But for us, it's normal for us not to have any time. <laughs> so we got to get the episode done. Um, I've also like... Uh, That's right. The I audience feel, is in the drive-thru right now. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it's like, come oh, yeah, in again. Uh, I basically like have done this so many times and they're simple characters that I feel comfortable enough to do most of it. I, I'm not doing the ball and chain just yet. Um, although I could and it would look fine, but it's better that you like break it down and di and digest it slowly basically like uh you do part of the animation first and the next part second um i broke it down into two kind of bigger pieces the, the character and then the ball and chain but i could like not do his face at first and then animate it and go back and animate the, f the face after like i did back here um but yeah it just depends um it's usually it's it's al almost always better to just one piece at a time well, and also too, in this particular instance, like you'll notice that Samuro's weapon is on the same uh, frames as him because the sword is a lot easier to uh, track animation wise. Whereas with the ball and chain, there's such a delay to its movement that it, it, it kind of deserves its own layer mm. yeah. uh, because it, it, it won't flow with Hogger the same way the sword would with Samuro. That's a good point too. 
Yeah, because it, it it's it's dragging behind everything Augur is doing. Yeah, it's, in this particular case, it's the unique weapon that is causing uh, Jonathan to break it up a little bit. Which also, in turn, like anything that's difficult in animation, um, if you do it half decent or if you do it right, it's it's way more satisfying to to press play. Um, I've like tried to shortcut and we do do shortcuts to our animations a lot um but like the 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 more time you spend animating it's it just is you get to be more proud of your work and uh satisfied with like the details when you animate the details it just it i don't know it brings satisfaction that when you cut corners it just does not bring <laughs> even if you get the cartoon done quicker you don't feel nearly as happy about it or as proud about it and then satisfied with the work you've done. Um, so it's kind of, it's, I don't know, that, that's why I like creating is like, it's, it's very much uh, a love letter to whatever you're doing. Uh, it has to have that care. Wise words. Um, oh, what's this question? that I see uh, in the chat, I guess. That joke's over, forget it. Here's the question. Um, uh, what is your favorite Blizzard game? Why? I mean, and why, not, not why. <laughs> why? <laughs> uh, huh, I don't know. What's your favorite Blizzard game? I did not want you to ask that, let's see. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's the maybe, thing. Maybe we should tell them like our history with Blizzard games. Jonathan was definitely more into StarCraft than anyone else in the family. Um, StarCraft two. I think well, equal, StarCraft oh, I one, one equally. Like we we were yeah, both I guess so. pretty yeah, into yeah. it. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I had friends that that played StarCraft one, Diablo one, uh, and Warcraft two, and somehow. I got them home, those games. I, I didn't steal them. <laughs> Somehow they got into our home. I don't even know how. Because uh, I didn't have any money. But I know I didn't steal them. Maybe, I don't know. But they're, they're, they they somehow got into our home. We started playing them from that point forward. And I think Jonathan gravitated to the Diablo franchise the most. Yeah, my first Blizzard game, I think, was Diablo 1. But is that your favorite? Uh, I think in terms of atmosphere, it is. Yeah, it? like, I love the atmosphere. It's not my favorite, because I can't just play it over and over, but I it, it definitely holds a special place. Like, it's just so... I don't know. I, lo I love how it's... It's so grim. Yeah, Diablo 2, you, you start to have, like... You start uh, to feel like an Avenger in Diablo yeah, 2. Yeah, you're, you're, you're pretty powerful. <laughs> yeah, you're like a superhero. Whereas, yeah. And then Diablo 3, you become Super Saiyan. <laughs> yeah, basically. That's so, the <laughs> That's the Nephilim power level there. Yeah. So like I like the gritty I don't know. I but anyway, so I guess my favorite uh my favorite game of Blizzard might be I don't know. I have really fond memories of all the games uh in different ways. Like I love Warcraft 3 for its editor. I had like lots of like things that I loved about it. Um, I loved messing around with the editor. Um, Diablo 2, I think I, I think it, when it comes down to it, probably Diablo 2, because we probably spent the most time with Diablo 2. Yeah. I think, eh? Yeah, probably. Probably spent the most time with Diablo 2. Um, I have a lot of fond memories uh, with Sam in uh, World of Warcraft um, doing PvP. Uh, yeah. Jordan, Jordan got me into World of Warcraft um, back in the day, and I play it, you know, usually probably for a couple months, you know, each year, get, touching the, touching up on the new the new stuff. Um, but yeah, I love PvPing in in WoW. Uh, I'm enjoying leaping three times, having three charges of leap with my warrior it is a lot of fun. I love it. That sounds like something I would like to do. Yeah, yeah, I totally would. Totally you. No, I can in the Rothy Basin. I can jump from the lumber mill the and go all the way to the blacksmith in like six seconds. It's pretty fun. 
Here we go. This is what this is what I have so far. Boom, boom. <laughs> you see that wow, weight Smarter shifting? Is, yeah, the smart has killed him. He's disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't got it yet. All right, so now I'm gonna do the the ball and chain, and this part is the he most heaviest animated part. After once once we get through here, uh, if you look at the the storyboard here, he's not really moving that much. It's more so like just key poses and a little bit of in betweens. So it's this this is the this is the bulk of the animation because it's so uh, like some of the some some of the humor or some of the uh, enjoyment it comes from like the actual specific motions and I want to make this look good so you guys can get a good a, a nice feel of kind of like when we do do our good animations or our heavier animation scenes you get to see how that's made and so I'm taking my time with this part uh, here specifically. Yeah, um, usually he's a lot faster than this, but he's trying to look good in front of all you guys. That's right. Also, um, uh, I forget what I was going to say. Sometimes I start saying something and I don't know where it's going. Well, especially when you're animating. Um, yes, that's what I was going to say. Because I'm talking, I'm also like not as quick. I can just stop talking. <laughs> no, because then I have to talk. I don't want to hear that. So, um... Yes? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're, my push... We're both just like... <laughs> and, uh... No, because I, I, I'm in the, the window <laughs> with all the questions. Oh, and yeah. my push to talk is like an actual key that makes a character. Yeah. And so I was holding it down and it was creating all... This entire line of, uh -oh. of the um, of the button. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> Okay. Oh, um, right now I'm doing a motion blur. Watch this. This is the ball. What? That is. That's not a ball. That looks like a fireball. Well, that's a, that's a, uh So we do it sometimes in uh, oh, a lot of times in the episodes. It, it it looks sloppy, but so like if you pause it on the video and it's, this is what you see, you're like, what is that? Um, it actually works really well. It's yeah. Uh, yeah. You go. In, in betweens are notorious for looking ugly. Yeah. But, I don't know, it's weird how, like, if you actually animated the ball, like, and it stayed a ball, it does not look as good. Have you ever taken a picture of someone, or have seen a, a picture of you, and you're blinking and your mouth is half open? That's your in-between. <laughs> right. That's your in-between. That's your ugly state that, that, you know, you're not posing. You're not doing your key pose. <laughs> it's yeah. your in-between. Yeah, the key poses are nice, and the in-betweens are usually don't look nearly as, a, as uh, attractive. Yeah, your eyes are half open and you could use like, you could, someone could easily just put some meme text on the picture. Yeah. There's uh -huh. another motion blur. Whoa! Exaggeration. Yeah. Really fast. So the further the lines are apart from each other, the faster it is on. I, I think that's obvious, but just in case, uh, the faster the motion is. Oops. What did I just do? Um, and the closer the lines are together, the slower the motion will be. Um, as you saw uh, back uh, when I first started, when he was like ending his spin, those lines are really close together which slows down the, the speed or momentum of whatever you're drawing. And in this case, he's going really fast. From here, from here all the way to over here. Yeah, and also you'll see in the, in the near future, when we get to the part with the fridge, you'll see that sometimes having nothing at all <laughs> also makes it look really fast. Yeah. <laughs> instant, you might say. It, you may say it's instantaneous. Oh, by the way, when do you uh, want to cut over to Andrew, who's doing the backgrounds? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get you to do the backgrounds as soon as I'm done animating and I start coloring. Oh, okay, um, sounds good. Uh, I'll start coloring and I'll show them what the, what coloring's like, and then we'll uh, once we kind of get a 
a taste of that. Uh, cause coloring isn't the most exciting thing. We'll do backgrounds cause that's more exciting. <laughs> cause backgrounds is more exciting. Yes. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we got here. Play it. And he, and he disappears. This is it in slow-mo. Oops. Uh, wrong. Hogger has a blink at level 20, by the way. He just disappears. Actually, he doesn't. I know, I was I know. joking. <laughs> <laughs> I know you know. The, you're that guy. You're yeah. that guy. Actually, yeah. <laughs> um, he, no, he doesn't have a, have a... Actually, I don't know if he does. I don't, I don't think he either. does. I'm pretty sure. I don't remember that option. This is on you. You're the one that has been him. I have never been him. Okay, I'm going through a frame by frame. Rrrt. Spin. Slow down. S wind up. Swing. Swing again. And then disappear. Hold on, there's a problem. Samuro blocks nothing. Oh, there's yeah. I got to... Uh, well, like... I like the animation, so he doesn't block. <laughs> 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 I don't know if we okay. have time to go back. That's all right. We'll just take that part out. Yeah, so that's going to be his first. I'm going to remove that block. And it's always easier to take away animation than to add it. Yep. Overcompensating yeah. is sometimes a, a good thing to do. He also blocks right here, so... Move that a bit. Boom. Boom. Oh, where's his butt flag? Oh, he lost it. When yeah, he, he, when he yeah. Uh, falls over. It oh, there it is. Because yeah. I didn't want to animate it. <laughs> 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 Here I am. Like, it's way. good to take your time uh, and animate. It looks nicer, which it would look nice. But uh, for it's sake okay. of time and stuff. You, you saw it out and you took it. I yeah. respect that. All right, now I gotta do is uh, him getting hit. Oh, oh, oh! All right, here. Oops. There you go. His uh, eyes is big. Um, excuse me, Mr. Carbot. I have a question. Okay, that's creepy. Let's <laughs> do that again. <laughs> What's the question? <laughs> Did that really creep you? This Did you think like, I don't know. It makes you feel uncomfortable. Okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> what is your favorite episode you made? Uh, ooh. Well, the, se the season finale for StarCrafts. I you think. mean the series finale. Series finale, I mean. Yeah, that's what I meant. Okay, I'm making his, like, limbs and tail go straight. Um, I think, I think yeah. I think John's favorite uh, thing to animate was Zealot fighting oh, the, yeah. Ultras, the Thor and the yeah. Colossus. Killing all the massive units and jumping up the Broodlings <laughs> to kill the Broodlord. Yeah. I and loved we, animating yeah. that part. It took a long time. It was the that was the uh uh probably my most ambition animation to date and even then it was still kind of rushed because uh of the uh of the uh you know we're trying to get do this this uh half an hour cartoon uh between just a couple of us um but uh, i put as i did the best i could uh for the time i had and i really am happy with the way it turned out so um yeah, that whole he showed episode. It to me like, sorry, what? That whole uh, that whole episode, I'm really proud of, but I feel yeah. like that's kind of a cop out because it's just, it's it's the series finale, so obviously we put a lot of work into it. So what were yeah, you gonna say? Um, well, I was gonna say uh, one thing that makes that scene really really good animation wise is that um, if you can learn to animate camera work that really does make uh, a scene look more epic. Um, and in that shot, in those shots, there's a lot of cool camera work of like, you know, the zealot running towards the camera and the camera sort of turns and the zealot starts running away from the camera to slice at the, I don't know. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, um, that was that, it was it was weird to animate. Yeah, well, that's what you that's what you do because you're not literally turning a camera. You're just you're animating the zealot as if the camera's moving, mm-hmm. right? So it's it's actually can be tricky, but if you can get a good grasp on it, it's actually really 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 cool uh, if done right. There's something satisfying about um, something that's not 3D that looks almost 3D because you've you've animated the uh, dimensions of it like with the camera rotating. Yeah. I think it feels cool because it's almost unexpected and when you see it, you're like, whoa, I didn't yeah. expect that. <laughs> but yeah. Um, my favorite one I worked on, I think, was the Deathwing episode. I really liked animating that episode. It was a lot of fun. I like treating him like a dog. Yeah. It's like uh, animating Zergling, too, is always fun because of that reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like it doesn't matter what's happening in the episode. They will be uh, on character. It'll be on point with their character. <laughs> yeah. Deathwing, the Zerglings. Uh, yeah. We just like the. I think what started him tr- being a dog was um, we. We, we really like the idea of Kel'Thuzad trying to chain him, but it doesn't work. So it kind of felt like the whole leash thing and a, a, a dog being too big to, to be controlled. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think we kind of added that character to him after like the whole always unstoppable type of uh, yeah. uh, thing was going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, a dog too big, you, you can't control him. But then we also felt it was kind of neat that Tyka's put used his quote-unquote gun or the spray bottle at the end yeah. uh, because Tychus is really good against big enemies, right? Yeah. And dogs don't like water. So we thought that was a neat, neat little... It feels right because, like, yeah. his gun doesn't... Like, you don't notice it. <laughs> it's like he's shooting at you. And you. You don't, like, you don't... Visually, you don't notice it. And all of a sudden, you're almost dead. You're like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't even see his bullets. It's just... Yeah. And you, you don't even hear them. It's just like, it's almost like it's in the background. Yeah. And, yeah. and all of a sudden you're melting. Yeah. And Jonathan and I know that all too well because we both play tanks a lot in Heroes of the Storm. Yep. Diablo and Arthas. Diablo and Arthas. The Bash both, Brothers. The Bash Brothers. Uh, Jonathan plays more char- characters than me, but we both have very high level uh, Arthas and, and Diablo. I've hit, I've hit over 300, level 300 of Arthas. Do that again. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, 260 something Diablo, I think. Uh, but he plays way more characters and plays more than me. I basically play Arthas half the time. <laughs> I'm playing Heroes of yeah. the <laughs> I don't know how to do his mouth here. Oh! <laughs> That's what <I> Oh! <laughs> Uh, oh wait, I want to change the arm here. Um, yeah, Heroes is a nice game to play because it's easy. Like I don't know, it's just like there's like commitment, but also no commitment at the same time. Yeah, yeah, it's easy That's to get like into a game, it. and it doesn't take an hour for it to finish. And you can pick up a play anytime, and you're not behind. Like, like say, uh. Like in World of Warcraft, the level cap goes up, you know, and stuff like that. Um, or items get more powerful or whatever, you know. Um, so in that sense, like, your your friends get ahead kind of thing. Um, but in uh, Heroes of Storm, you get to just, it's a more of an arena experience, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Your effectiveness often is, is how well you play your character and how well you know the characters you're against. Yeah, you build appropriately. Which I guess is kind of a similar thing because you need to have knowledge is power. Yeah, well, that's the kind of game it is, and that's kind of cool. I like that. Yeah, knowing when someone's gonna pop their alt, and you're just like, no, shut that down. Bork, bork, bork. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that kind of answers the question. How did you develop your style? So yeah, that that was sort of like the same thing. Yeah, well, I, I could, I didn't quite, I didn't really answer that, so I could still. You're so, you're so stylish, Jonathan. How did you develop that style? Yeah, look at this. Ooh, you're, 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 the, you're the hipster of animation. Yeah. Um. It was uh uh so um, actually so before I even started YouTube, my style 
you, you know my, my drawing style was Andrew was like all gritty and se semi real but not like super real I was never like uh, a, a super realistic drawer and I was like it was okay and stuff um, and then I started doing these cute cartoony things that are super simple um, and, and the why, why I got inspired by it was because I saw a, uh, a YouTube channel called Bird Box Studio and they uh, made these animations. It, it was like people or this or that, but it was like these basic shapes. And I thought it was so cool that they still communicated all the emotions um, of, you know, uh, wait, what am I doing here? Oh, shoot. I totally messed that up. Um, of, uh, I could save some of it, of like uh, all the emotions of what was going on. And I thought that was really cool. Uh, and Without yet, any dialogue, simple. yeah. No dialogue, yeah, and it had no dialogue too. So that was another thing. And I remember, I remember thinking like, "Oh, I want to use uh, Blizzard sound effects." You, and I remember like talking to like friends and stuff. Do you think they'll be mad? <laughs> 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 Little did I know, like within the first two cartoons, uh, a guy named Kevin Johnson, uh, who I'm good friends with now, um, he used to be the StarCraft community manager. He reached out. Uh, like right away almost and uh, uh, and then our friendship with Blizzard started from there and they've they honestly and this is like this is not even because we're on a panel or anything they've always treated us so well I, I could not emphasize that enough well, for our relationship Blizzard has always been really awesome towards us agreed They've yeah. been they've been super great and supportive. They're the reason why we were able to do this full time. Yeah. Oops, that's not right. Yeah. So thank you, Blizzard, and thank and also thank you, audience. Holy cow, man! Like everyone every week that returns to watch the cartoons, like mm -hmm. you guys are the lifeblood, really. Andrew has four kids, so if you. <laughs> You're helping him feed his four kids. Yeah, man. You're, uh... You're, but really, you're... though, not only did we grow up with, like, Blizzard games, um, uh, so it is, like, automatically a dream come true, but, like, the fact that we're able to do it together, and everyone has been supportive. Our families, you guys, Blizzard, like, we could not have asked for, for more. Oh my gosh, what am I doing here? But we will subscribe if you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I need to make him stumbling backwards. Oops. How are we doing for time here? I don't know. When oh, you... <laughs> almost about an hour. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I to keep track of the questions all the time. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's just so many questions. Yeah. Here's Who a question from me. Here's a question from me. Actually, do you feel that you get the same questions every year? Uh, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> it's or a, a really common one is, what, what, what? Why the name Carbot? Yeah, which car did you buy and why? Yeah, um, which the answer is it's a Diablo 2 story. And basically, um, uh, we would do uh, bail runs. And my brother Sam, our, our younger brother Sam, he uh, for some reason decided to start naming the, we do private so no one could steal the items. <laughs> and he started to name the, uh, the game's Carbot. For, I don't know for no reason whatsoever, and that was that. It was that it was Carbot One, Carbot Two, Carbot Three, and so when I was thinking of a channel name, that popped in my head. Got it stuck. So basically, somebody. Sam owns the company. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. Really, it's Sam. He's the math. He's the avatar, the mastermind behind it. All. Yeah. Which is. Right. Uh, uh, he he did work uh, with us, but he had another full-time job, and he he did the sound, 
Uh, and so there just wasn't enough work for him to come full time, unfortunately. Um, and with him, ha as, you know, raising his new little family, he couldn't do two jobs. So yeah. Um, so he's got a full time job, um, but he still helps out with ideas here and there. He's he's really good with ideas, he's, especially he, when you're done an episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're already done, he's like, "You should do this." I'm like, "Ah." That's so good, I can't deny it. Yeah, that's right. Where were you two days ago? <laughs> Where were you? Yeah, days ago. Like, yeah, he's that's his specialty. We're releasing this tomorrow, Sam. That has happened. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with this guy. I think I'm doing it, but... Okay. Uh, I think he's gonna dr drop his ball and chain right here when he gets hit. Or there we go. And then his ball and chain rough. I'm gonna pop out. Oh, jeez. Again, the weight. The ball is going to move a lot less. I should probably, uh, I'm just going to do the ball first. So I don't have to think too much about, um, it's funny how sometimes when we do a cartoon, um, we'll get some comments that say, well, Carbot loves Terran, or Carbot loves. Oh, yeah, <laughs> especially in the beginning of Starcrafts. Especially in the beginning, let's see other things. No, nope, that looks. Yeah, awful. or like the first time, the first time um, we did a battleground cartoon and the Alliance one, and people were like, "Oh, Carbot's an Alliance fan." Yeah, and, <laughs> and we're just like, "No, we just." I don't we're know we're actually right. play Horde, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't think uh, like. Actually, there's a, on our Discord. Somebody asked us, asked us, uh, uh, asked me, um, or you must hate stalkers because this one episode. I was like, no, I play Protoss. Like, it, it, we don't really, we don't play. I don't think we play favorites. We just go with whatever ideas we think of. Um, you really confused me for a second back there because I, when you said the word. <laughs> Stalker, the unit didn't come into my mind. Oh, really? <laughs> Carl must hate stalkers. Yeah, Carl must hate yeah. stalkers. No, I don't. I love stalkers. I love stalkers. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. Um, yeah, but I, I really always have a few. I always have a few stalkers in my midst. Yeah, but like I, I, yeah, I don't think we we play favorites at all. Like we don't like. Oh, I like this, or I hate. And like I can't stand that. So. Um, oh, actually, we do do that <laughs> because it's funny, though. Because it's funny, but like we we just go for what it makes us laugh, and then we try to put that on screen and do it justice the way it, it's in our minds. Yeah, like we'll put energy into using a character or a unit that um, doesn't get a lot, that hasn't got a lot of uh, limelight. But at the same time, it, we're gonna naturally find jokes where we have the most gameplay. So for instance, mm -hmm. if, since Jonathan plays Diablo a lot in the first, you know, I don't know, 10 to 20 episodes, you probably saw Diablo quite a bit. Uh, you, not that much actually. Oh really? Oh, okay. Yeah, he's not in it, he's not in it. Andrew wasn't uh, uh, working with me full time at that point, but like. But I still watched all the cartoons. Yeah, oh well, I know, but like he wasn't, he was in it, like, like he was, but he was in it a couple times, but he wasn't like, uh, he wasn't at all the main guy. He was the main guy for like I think episode two or three. Um, he was one of the main characters on screen, but like every other time he's been in it, he's been mostly in the background. Um, but yeah, yeah, it is it is obviously more natural to think of more ideas with characters that you play more. Um, but it also works in the same that if if a lot of people are playing certain characters. Um, uh, a lot, then uh, you you still think of ideas because you face those characters, like especially with heroes. Uh, 
Okay, so what I'm doing here, actually, I'm doing a, a squash and stretch. So, to save time, I'm just making him, like, hit him and bounce. Yeah. Like that. And so it feels impactful still. And that, uh, that, uh, uh, pause is actually kind of like a key animation thing to kind of uh, emphasize the, the, uh, the combat has stopped and what's going on. Yeah, that's like a, a second or two for audience processing and, and kind of like resetting the scene in a way. Mm hmm. It's like it's like breathing between sentences. Yeah, kind of. And it works for comedic value too, or whatever. Whatever that is. <laughs> whatever comedic value our cartoons hold, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, there's a question here. It says, "What's your favorite part of the process?" And I think Jonathan and I can both agree that the favorite, our favorite part of the process is when. There's more than one of us coming up with an idea for an episode, and we're coming up with the idea. That's yeah. like the best part of making an episode is when we're laughing and saying the things that we want to see on screen, and we're acting them out. We're and we're we're, we're being dumb and just just being goofy, uh, and just saying things that if you were in the same room, you may not understand. It might look like we're speaking another language, but uh, it's really our cre our brainstorming creative process. Yeah, that is the most fun part. And then we try to do what we thought of, and it doesn't come out <laughs> nearly as good as in our brains, but we're still happy with it. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> like, for instance, the uh, the I the, that one Hearthstone Battleground cartoon that, that we did with Mukla uh, and the banana peels and, and the garbage that he kept throwing on the tables. Like, those were his cards, essentially. <laughs> yeah. When we came up with the idea for that episode... I could not stop laughing. My, my my chest, my neck, there was like parts of my body that were hurting because my my abs, all of it was hurting from laughing so much. Um, it, it just it was so funny to come up with the idea. And although it was well done animation wise, for for whatever reason, sometimes the the animation just doesn't fully live up to the the idea that we had. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't remember a time where I laughed as hard when coming up with an idea. It was just so ridiculous in my head. Yeah, and that and that like I mean, I don't know. I feel like we've been pretty lucky that uh, people have been like. I feel like we've we've done our very best to try to uh, try to keep every every episode like I I don't know. I feel like we don't neglect our episodes ever. Um, we there's some that we we try harder for others, but I feel like we never neglect our episodes. Um, uh, but like, I don't know. I'm, I'm. Some of them turn out better than others, and I don't know. That's okay. Like, you're never gonna well, be at a hundred percent. And also, we're human, so whenever we do neglect, usually there's someone else on the team that will see it and be like, "Hey, let's." Uh, yeah, that's let's, always uh, helpful too. Make it better here. That's always helpful too. Yeah. And everyone, everyone's kind of done that at some point. Uh, Jordan did it in the last in the last episode, which you guys have already seen by now, even though it's not out yet technically in our time. <laughs> yeah, in our timeline. His uh, eyes like move from his snout to his upper. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter because this guy's nuts anyway. So I'm gonna do a walk cycle now. We'll see how that goes. Sounds good. All right. What I like to do actually is um, just keep the uh, the original drawing there um, because the walk cycle has to loop, and so it's got to come back to its original frame, uh, which can be like you need to know what the original frame was, obviously. Um, yeah. Otherwise, there'll be like a cut or a blip in the animation. Yeah. yeah. Walk cycles like some people. Like some people is easy, other people find, can find them very difficult. Uh, the best way to approach it though is to, um, I, I think it depends on like the character sometimes or what you're trying to do with the walk cycle. But the best way to approach it is just do the, again, the keyframes first. 
Uh, and the keyframes are, um, I actually have it in the background, so, are uh, the, the right foot forward and left arm back, uh, or a left arm forward and then right left foot forward and right arm forward kind of thing. Uh, the opposite, basically, so like this. Uh, oh wait. So oh, basically, wait. what you're saying is, when animating a walk cycle, it's uh, one step at a time. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'll be here all night, folks. Actually, no. We have a, we have a time limit. There. But kind of like this. So this is like it, it in its basic form. And you could keep that if that's what you're going for. I mean, it works. <laughs> if we truly yeah. had no time, uh, I would just uh, skew these images that I already have here. Yeah, we, we would use that animation if he was like on a mini map. Oh yeah, that'd be good, yeah. Or in the maybe even in like the far background, it might be fine. But now I do the in-betweens. Before I do that, there's just this onion skin showing up in the background here. Okay. Did you already make him throw the fridge? No. Oh, I did the keyframes. Oh, but okay. I thought I, I thought like... I'd show the walk cycle. Um, yeah, no, it's fine. I just I like I'm having a hard time remembering. <laughs> I don't yeah. know why. I, I mean, was, I'm paying attention. That should have walked like this is something different, you know, than uh, what uh, we were doing before. I love how he just leaves his ball and chain on the floor. Yeah. I'll go to the fridge. Mouth. Again, these lines are very close together, so... Uh... Uh, hey there, uh, Mr. Corbot. Uh, uh, sir, I have a question for y you. Okay. Uh, I heard, uh, question? it's, it's hard to get, uh, by financially, uh, as a YouTube, uh, company. As a YouTube? As a YouTube, uh, person. Um, how do you make it work? How does how does it work? Great question. Um, it's tough. I feel like we're so lucky. Hey. Oh like, yeah, we we already we already like doubled down on talking about that. Yeah, right right from the beginning we were lucky. Um, and also, like our fans are supportive. We have, uh, we have, uh. Yeah, you, know, you monetize on YouTube, and then you also have uh, uh, a support through our, our patrons um, on Patreon, and uh, uh, and then Blizzard has commissioned us for cartoons, and you get sponsors and things like that. And that, like, it, it's all that combined that allows us to continue to do what we do. Um, if we didn't have all that, it'd be very tough. Yes, I, I have. Uh, I've heard many YouTubers say that um, you should never. YouTube itself is never uh, alone a form of way a way of making money. It should, but it can be a platform used to help you bring in money. other forms of money. Yeah, um, to yeah. support your your cause and your uh, and whatever and your creative endeavors. Yeah. So it's. I'm not a business person. Um, uh, so it's been uh, it's been difficult for me. I don't know. We both aren't, um, but uh, luckily we've we've had luck on our side, uh, which which has helped a lot. Um, I think it was timing too, as well. Timing was a was a was a good thing. We I started to animate uh, Starcrafts, which was our first series, at the uh at, like between before heart of the swarm came out between wings of liberty and heart of the swarm i'm not paying attention to this walk cycle here so yeah oops 
pretty cool stuff. I, I, I don't know what else to say to that to that because like there's that's such a deep question, and I also feel like we we got a free pass almost. <laughs> Not a free pass, yeah. but yeah, it's it's been uh, uh, I don't know, luck of the draw. I think we did do a lot of things right, but at the same time, even if you're doing things right, it's hard to break through and and then sustain yourself on that breakthrough. Yeah. Agreed. Almost done this walk cycle. All right, so now I just got to do one last frame and that is connecting these orange lines to these blue lines uh, to line it up, to cycle it through. And hopefully it looks good. He's looking hungry. I'm, I'm getting hungry. What do you feel like eating? Pizza. It's pretty good stuff. There. Nice. Okay, let's see how that looks. Let's play. There you go. This is, this is kind of like a style too. I could have just drew the head once and then made a bobbed up and down. Uh, but if you're going for like this wiggly line style that's kind of happening right here right now. Um, uh, at the top here. It kind of, in a way, kind of gives more life. Uh, it gives more character, I think. Yeah, and also he's only doing it for like a second and a half, so yeah, it's not. It wouldn't even be noticeable. And speed uh, it up. I'm gonna remove some frames. See what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I accidentally deleted one. Let's go back. Bring it back! Bring it back! Control Z is your best friend. Control Z. I wish I had a Control Z for everyday choices. Yeah. Sometimes, like, look for that in real yeah. life. Or, like, when you're playing a game and you're like, uh, oh, shoot, I should have jumped on this person a second earlier than that person. Mm -hmm. And then we should control Z back there two seconds. <laughs> okay. So he just moves over here. So you animate on the spot and then you kind of just drag the, uh, the character where you need them to be. So... I create a motion tween. Character's gonna be over here. And so and now I'm gonna just drag the uh, character over to that spot. And he'll walk. Behold. Hogger walketh. I don't even know if he goes through the whole walk cycle. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, almost. It reminds me of those old point-and-click games. Yeah. You click on the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> Get. Hey, Warcraft. Typing. Warcraft is gonna have that game. Warcraft Adventures or whatever. Oh yeah, when you're thrall, yeah. Yeah. Where is? Where is the the friggin? Uh... No, he doesn't talk like that. <laughs> Does he really? No, I don't know. It never came out. Where is, where is the work work? He's, he's Yoda all of a sudden. <laughs> where is it? Hmm. Yeah. Are okay, so this is what we got. This is what we got right now. Um. Uh, oh wait, hold on. Let me uh make invisible the other one. Drum. Woof woof. He throws the fridge. Okay, I didn't do the fridge. I do that now. Fridge involves a symbol. Symbols are just uh, things that sound cool. A symbol is just uh, an asset that you you can use over and over again in uh, uh, Adobe Animate. So like the, that walk cycle was in a symbol. It has its own timeline. It's kind of like putting an animation or a drawing in a box and you save it for later if you want, or yeah. you can duplicate the box, you know. It's right, kind of like fridge. giving it that protective layer. The fridge is going to be... Okay, so um, 
I'm going to start coloring actually uh, and finish this animation uh, as we go into backgrounds. But I think uh, you guys kind of got a, a good feel of what the animation is all about. Uh, Andrew will be doing the backgrounds um, right after I kind of show how I color here. Uh, and the coloring process is very simple. It's just point and click. Kind of like a shooter game. You just click. And you click again. <laughs> Bam, got him. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Um, what I like to do, though, is just stick with the color. And go through it quick. Um, that way, uh, I don't have to keep switching colors. And I feel like it goes a lot quicker. And uh, once I do that... But yeah, so that's that's it for like the uh, the uh, coloring. I'm just gonna color the ball, and then we'll go over to Andrew, and uh, the heck, that's the ball, and uh, he'll do the backgrounds for this episode. There, sounds good. Are we'll we going over right. to my desk right now, or yes? Let's go. Let's go. Can you hear my footsteps? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, everyone? I'm Andrew. Uh, I do uh, a lot of the animations uh, for the episodes after Jonathan and I have come up with a lot of the ideas. Today, my part will be doing backgrounds. Don't worry, we'll make we'll, we'll make it exciting. All right, so what do I have here? I have my screen, right? This is what the people can see. And then I have my reference. We're gonna be doing a Tomb of the Spider, spider uh, verse. Uh, this, we kind of want this this is a different sort of reference. This is sort of what we want out of the background I'm about to make. We want this kind of um, uh, runway, I guess you could say, out of this background. Because um, what we often do, you may have noticed or may not have noticed, dear viewer, is that we tend to just use one background and just move it around or zoom in on it, right? It's because you only see this, right? So we like zoom in on it and go here and then like we'll cut to a person over here and then over here. Maybe it's only forest over here and there's no structure. You know, it's just we try and get a, as much uh, mileage out of each piece of art as we can. They're, they are weekly cartoons after all. Oh my gosh, it's so boring. Okay, fine. Sorry. All right, here we go. It's not going to be boring. I promise. So we're going to make a Tomb of the Spider Queen background. And as you can see here, we got, what do we got? We got like this wall. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make the, uh, you know the egg? Where you deliver your, what are they, candy? The gems, you deliver the candy to the egg, and then uh, the gems to the egg, and then over oh, just right over here, just off screen. And then we have this wall, and then this uh, sort of murk camp. So I think we're gonna just try that. We're gonna build this part, this part, and this part, all within five to 10 minutes. So let's, this is the, gonna be the majority of the work right here, because this is what's gonna be reused the most, this wall. So let's just make it. Let's just start. Why, why can't, oh, that pen doesn't work. Let's try this pen. Oh yeah, it works. Okay, cool. We're gonna go and we're gonna make sure we get a little bit of view of, view of this here while I, while I work. Okay, so we're just, gonna, we're just gonna make a quick. Descend my daughters, descend and destroy. Oh man. Andrew, I didn't know backgrounds could be this so exciting. Oh, contraire, Abathair. They can be. They're as fun as you make them. Okay? So we have this wall, uh, and we're gonna like, um, eye drop like this kind of purpley uh, color. We'll make it a little bit grayer. That might be too purple. And then we're just gonna grab it, and we're gonna, we're gonna maybe shrink it a little bit. And we're just gonna like repeat it. We're just gonna grab it, move over here, and maybe we'll flip it. And move a piece right here so it looks like it's a little bit you know that's good for that sort of brick wall for now i know really simple actually there's a bit of a lining up top and at the bottom like this kind of gold trim you see that let's do a little bit of that let's make it look a little bit nicer cool wow andrew this is so exciting i know you doubted uh the backgrounds uh, here they are showing you up we're gonna make some stuff in the foreground so see we got these like sarcophagi these sarcophagi and then this also, this sort of thing here. So we're gonna make another sort of like big, big pillar looking thing. This doesn't have to be too symmetrical because we want it to have a little bit of character. Yeah, this, and then we're gonna have like a bright purple color, maybe that one, yeah. As like the, uh, the gem color. There's lots of like, 
um, gems decoring like the uh, the walls, and we're gonna like make them all that color to bring it in a little bit. Um, that's not what I want to do. Oh, <gasps> you've got to be kidding me! You've got to be. <laughs> Remember, kids, be smart. Always save your progress. <laughs> Okay, it's fine, it's fine. Let's do it again. Fun stuff. Okay, so now we got a wall. <laughs> we got a wall going for us. So yeah, so now we can like play around with the, the length of this wall if we want, or we can even make this uh, the edge of the wall, you know. Uh, we can kind of have that uh, versatility, I guess. I'm not talking about PVP versatility, okay? I'll draw you a couple sarcophagi guys. Right, like... What's this? Backgrounds are the most exciting part of the show! <laughs> <laughs> Grab these two, duplicate those, put them over here. What else is found in this, uh, dang never place? We're gonna do the spider webs last because it's like, sort of like an accent to the whole place. Let's do a floor. See this floor here? Okay. And then we get a color similar to this, probably just brighter because it is the floor. If there was any kind of light, the floor would be lit more than the, than the walls. And then we see here we have this like pattern. I don't know if that pattern is that important, but we will do what we can to sort of replicate it. And then we just take that and we're just gonna duplicate it like crazy. Some parts are messy, but eh, it's fine. So because it's a spider cavern, we're gonna need a ceiling. So let's make a ceiling quick. This is just gonna be super quick because this is barely gonna be even in it. Nothing too crazy. And we can even like just stretch it out a bit. Okay, um, so we're gonna grab this wall. Shrink it a little bit, put it over here. All right, where's, where's our reference? Let's take, a, let's take a little peek at our reference, okay? So like, let's make this gem a symbol. Okay, we're gonna make a symbol. So we're going to just take that and put it in other places. Put three of them together. Do the same over here. It's looking pretty good, not bad. So you have to keep in mind too that none of this entire thing will not be seen all at once at any time. So if we ever need to move anything around to hide any like blemishes, uh, we will do that very, very easily. So for this part, I'm going to get, um, cause you remember if this is the egg part, we'll do the, uh, we'll do the egg thing right now. If this is the egg part right here. Okay. And then what does that egg look like? Uh, I looked up reference before. I think it looks something like this. I don't know, something like that. So now we got our egg, where you deposit the, uh, you know, whatever. Shush. All right, and then we're gonna open another file to quickly. Jonathan has made some really neat, already, uh, already some neat special effects here. We're just gonna steal a couple of these. How does he do it? Descend, my daughters. Descend and praise him. Done. All right, so we've got we've got some decorations to work with. Like we can we can bring these over here again. It doesn't have to be super um, accurate here, and we can kind of even mix it up. Like we'll put one here, and then make like a, a a different pattern on the wall. All right, so um, now we're just gonna add some um, just some decorations. So here I have this um, Diablo two pot that we used in Luke Golane dungeons. And we're just gonna throw it in here. Let's make one a little bit taller, right? Stick it in the corner, right? So it's just like, and then we can um, grab these three. I like the way these three are together. And we're gonna grab them again and move them over here. Put them in this corner, right? Um, now, so they don't really look like they fit though, right? They're just like, oh, they still kind of look like Luke Galane pots. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna change the color. And then the design on them, And voila, new pots. Now, for some spider webs, you know, just sprinkle this stuff in. 
And everywhere, anywhere, and everywhere. Maybe right by these, this thing can go here in this corner. And then it looks like there's some kind of like symbol on the ground. Oh, it's a big circle. It's a giant circle where a mercenary camp normally is. So we're just gonna do that. Very subtle, uh... My web weavers descend upon you. <coughs> okay, so this is basically the gist of what we do to create a background. And when we actually show it off, or when we have it inside, we can delete our, um, our reference here. When we show it off, we end up only showing like this much, right? So it makes just a bit more sense. Like, okay, well, we will need a shot where we show someone delivering gems to the egg. And so we're just gonna use this part. Or we need a shot of someone just running down the lane. And so we'll just kind of maybe leave it right here or right here, probably most likely. Running down the lane. This can also be used for a lane. Or if we want a Merc camp, we're just gonna put it right here. Or if we need the, the smoky part, we're just gonna leave it right there. Beside the Merc camp. You know how it is. So this can be kind of used for almost any situation in the uh, in the in the battleground, just for the cartoon, for the purposes of any any random cartoon. So that's basically it. Thanks so much for watching. I uh, the, the, thanks for watching the most exciting part of the process. Uh, back to you, Jonathan. Um, what's the weather like over there? All right. Uh, let's go ahead and grab Andrew's background. Open. Uh, look at all these heroes episodes. Oh my gosh. Squider, squider, spider queen. Um, the background's gonna be a little bit laggy because of all the effects he added. Or my computer's bad, I don't know. One of the two. Um, so I just copy it and go back into the scene. And uh, I finished animating, by the way, and I finished coloring. Um, and I'll show you guys what it looks like as soon as we put this background in. There we are. Plop it in. And there. And we'll clip everything to stage so we can see. Yeah, we might have to move it up a little. Wow, beautiful art, Andrew. Nice background. Look at the webs. They're blurry. That's nice. Flagging my computer. Look at the objective. That's cool too. All right, let's just place it. Uh, Andrew already explained, but like we have the the backgrounds really like long or whatever, um, so we can shift around for scenes. Let's go ahead and see how the scene looks. I'm gonna remove this here. He's smashed into him. Swings a couple times. Auger throws. Fridge. He eats his meal. Good. It's, it's acceptable. Mm, acceptable. As Alaric would say. All right, now we just got to plop that background into all the other uh, scenes we, we've we done, which we did off camera. I forgot to show you guys right at the beginning, but we'll go ahead and uh, plop these scenes in here. Um, here, I'll show you what we got here. Okay, let's see some rope here. There's three of them. He goes, ha 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 ha. And he, Hogger's like, ha 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 ha. And then he, he does the pinball. And he does that. And Samuro's worried. And then uh, he gets some good shots in him. But the fridge ultimately wins. There. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and plop the backgrounds in. Uh, control C, Control V. So that is and uh, once I get the backgrounds in then we're technically done the animation side and then we'll go on to the sound side um, this again I just moved around just to be sure uh, it feels like a different scene entirely still in the same area <laughs> um, I wish we could have shown you the entire process because uh, but I mean it does take a long time as you saw <laughs> Here's a little trick we do too. As Andrew said, we try to get the most mileage out of <laughs> out of our backgrounds or out of any of the work that we do. So this is a bird's eye view. What I'm gonna do is just grab the same scene. And this is what you do when you have weekly cartoons and you only have you don't have enough people. 
<laughs> you do what you gotta do, okay? Uh, that should look okay. Let's see what the motion, uh, the camera motion. There's a bit of a floor showing down there. Uh, go back to it. Oh! Once I'm finished touching that up... Whatever, it's fine. I'll fix it up off camera, I don't know. <laughs> Alright, so that's basically how we put in the backgrounds as well. Uh, thanks, Andrew, for making those backgrounds. And now we're going to go over to Jordan, who uh, is going to implement the sound, put it in. Uh, and we do that in Adobe Premiere. Let's go ahead, Jordan, take it away. Thanks, Jonathan. Hey, BlizzCon. Uh, now, once the episode has been animated, it gets uh, passed over to me, where uh, in Adobe Premiere Pro, I will import the the episode as a PNG sequence. Um, once I remember where it is, and then now and then I just click and drag onto the timeline, and then we have the episode here. Now this is a really short one compared to what we normally do, but uh, typically what I do is I I watch the whole episode see what's going on, see the characters that are inside of it. So now I see that there's Hogger and Samuro. Okay, so two characters. Uh, now what I'll end up doing is uh, I will get... I have all the files in, in on my computer or on a hard drive. Um, and I will go in... Now, firstly, we'll go... We'll start with Hogger. So I'll go in... Because uh, I typically will focus on one, one character at a time. Uh, once I've done all the characters, I then move on to other sound effects for random stuff that are happening. So what I use for grunts, we got hits, we got large hits and small hits. So a lot of the times I use these... Uh, you'll notice in Diablo episodes, I'll use the uh, uh sounds from the characters being hit as exclamations of some kind, whether they're surprised or scared or shocked or whatever. Um, so I'll use those as because it's it's... It's pretty uh, straightforward there. Each cartoon will be different. Each episode will be different, obviously, with what kind of sound effects I use. But like for this one specifically, um, the way I'm looking at Hogger as a character is he's like a he's a cartoon character. And so I really want to emphasize that when it comes to him and his abilities and his actions. So like for these minions here, when he hits them, I'll probably do some sort of uh, like uh, squeaky toy sound effect or something, right? <laughs> What else is for a spin here? So this is clearly like a pinball thing going on here. But I might just throw this faintly in the background or something for fun. This part. Right? Right? Okay. Alright, so I'll play with this. Um, finish this up. And then after I'm done, we will send it back to Jonathan. Um, after we export it. And uh, you guys should be able to enjoy the the full the full uh, experience. All right, thanks Jordan for showing us that little segment. And now we get to press play on the cartoon and actually watch it come to life with sound, animation, and everything else. It's just sound and animation, but <laughs> color, color and backgrounds. Uh, let's go ahead and press play. Let's watch the cartoon, see the final product. <laughs> Snack for Hogger. Mm. Okay, there's the. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that animation uh, that we've completed here for you. The kind of a full process for a scene anyway um it's been really fun i hope you guys had fun watching and uh don't forget to follow us on our social medias uh facebook twitter and of course oh instagram and of course youtube as well um and uh actually if you do follow us on our social media we are giving away these zergling plushies there so you won't want to miss that They're right there in the background we have a bunch of them and we're just giving them away so be sure to do that a big huge thank you too to the the audience and to Blizzard for inviting us on this panel. It's been a lot of fun and we're truly honored to to be here. Thank you everybody. Yeah, thanks guys for supporting uh with your views and everything that you do for us as well. Uh we love making this stuff and we hope to do it for many more years to come. So, thanks guys. We'll see you later.
Bye-bye.